So this morning, I left really early because I didn't want to be late. I have a 10.15 appointment, but we have to be here 10 minutes ahead of time. So I'm just saying 10 o'clock. And I was a half an hour early. And it's the kind of like part two of the puppy party that Bandit and I went to. Um, in order to enroll in their series of... I guess obedience classes or training classes you have to do this next step which is to consult with the trainer and I think it's limited to four people so it could be very well the same four people at the puppy party I don't know and you I, I don't really know what to do but you're asked or requested not to bring your dog so just a pad like something to take notes with and I guess we're going to consult with the trainer about concerns or questions we have and then I think after you complete this particular step you can enroll in the junior class I'm not quite sure maybe she'll say yeah you're ready or she could say oh you know why don't you wait until such and such a time I don't know I really have no idea what to expect so we're gonna head there a little bit early and I'm gonna just walk around and we'll see what happens Somebody say Halloween party. All right, let's finish off the day with some boba. All right, for the drive home, we have strawberry Allison tea with boba, aloe, and milk foam. Yum! Alright, so I thought I'd share with you what happened at today's consultation meeting to get Bandit into this puppy class. It was pretty exciting because this is the first time I've done anything like this in Japan. Um, I have had experience going to puppy class or obedience school with most of my dogs but I'm not very successful at it. I remember with my poodle, Smokey, we went to class and that class had sort of a graduation competition of sorts where they had the dogs do different things that they learned in the class and then there was like a prize or some kind of recognition if your dog passed all the uh, things that they had learned in class. And I just remember on the one where 
you have your dog stay and then you let go of the leash and then you go all the way back to this line and you wait there and your dog is supposed to wait there and the teacher comes with different treats and different things to try to distract the dogs and they're not supposed to move they're supposed to wait until your command to come to you and I, I thought Smokey did pretty good but it was a long time and I don't doubt that he got tired and bored and so sometime during that time he just got up and left and we were out of the competition all right so okay so that was all right and then with Sundance, my husky, I expected him to be a lot more, I guess, harder to train. But he was actually pretty good about following the training and following the instructions and doing the whole walk on the leash and stop and sit when you stop and all that stuff. But I don't think it retained. I think he was probably, out of all my dogs, maybe the most... Uh, rowdy or or not disobedient but when I think back about it it was totally my fault because I think where I was living was way too small for Sundance and he was a husky so of course he needed a lot more space and he wasn't good about staying home alone when I was at work so I am totally to blame for that and I think once we brought him to my parents house and my dad sort of adopted him he got the exercise and the constant attention that a big husky needs with Sinbad I didn't know what opportunities there were for dog training or dog classes so basically I just used what I remembered from training Sundance and Smokey and Sinbad caught on to things pretty well and I didn't have to teach him things like housebreaking or or toilet training he just sort of did everything on his own and did pretty well and because I took him out a lot and he was around people and other dogs a lot I, I didn't feel like there was anything I needed to train him in I think though as he got older he got a little bit more uh, feistier or a little bit more difficult so I think that's why as he got older it was harder for him to welcome people into our lives so maybe that's why he was sort of intimidating to my mom he was still good about going out to places so we could go to any dog cafe any dog run and he was really good about socializing with other dogs and people he kind of kept to himself like he was just kind of in his own world kind of a my pace kind of dog and yeah we didn't have any problems with that the barking especially with pomeranians he was okay i think when he was younger but as he got older he barked more at different things so today in today's class i learned that there's a certain stage where the barking develops and at this puppy stage they're not barkers yet so as it comes i think i wrote it all in my notes i think she said something like between eight months or around eight months is when the barking will start to increase so it's important to train your dog during that time to let the dog know what kind of barking is acceptable and what kind of barking is not acceptable so that brings me to bandit uh, I didn't know any of the people that were in today's class they weren't people that had come to the puppy party I went to but I thought it was kind of cool because there were five women five of us and one woman uh, we didn't bring our dogs we were asked not to bring our dogs today because it was just a um, I thought it was just a half an hour it was from 10 15 to 11 45 so about a 90 minute class and one woman had a Sheba, a Sheba dog, and that was like her second dog. So she had another dog at home. And then there was a girl that had a Pomeranian and two other Chihuahua owners and me, also a Chihuahua owner. So 
it was a good group and all of the dogs were around the same age. Uh, when we got there, you are asked to fill out kind of a questionnaire survey to give the instructor a little bit more background about your dog and about what problems you might be having or what things you hope to learn and of course I couldn't read all the Japanese so luckily she had two assistants with her and the assistant went over the sheet with me so some of the questions were things like where does your dog sleep uh, where does your dog eat where does your dog usually use the toilet uh, what else? How many people are in your household? Are there any other animals or pets in your household? How many times do you go out for a walk? Uh, how long has the dog been living in your current residence? What else? And then just things of that nature. Um, I guess that's about it. If you've had any problems, if you've had any experiences or opportunities yet to socialize your dog, uh, what else? If they have been neutered or spayed yet. And then they had a free writing section where you could ask specific questions or things that you would like to know. So for, oh, and they asked a lot about personality. Like when your dog meets other dogs, how does, what how do they react when your dog meets other people how do they react how are they in group situations and all kinds of stuff like that so it was a pretty detailed questionnaire but it was only a page long now the instructor gave us a handout and so I made a lot of notes in English and just went over some different steps which I found really uh, valuable she went over different developmental stages in puppies and dogs and different behaviors that you might see and what that might mean. Different things that you and who's ever in your household could do to keep things consistent. And most of it is all stuff I've heard before or things that I've read before. So it was kind of good to have that background. All of us, except for the girl with the Pomeranian and one of the girls with the Chihuahuas, uh, had never or had had experience with dogs. Those two uh, pet parents were the only ones that had never had a dog. And they were both young girls. Like I would say they were in their 20s, um, perhaps. And the rest of us were, well, I guess the other girl with the Chihuahua was also fairly young. And then the Sheba woman and I were older. Well, me, of course. I'm always the oldest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so she spoke a lot about these behaviors. And then the main instructor kind of not take, she wasn't taking a break. She was sort of rereading all our questionnaires. And during that time, one of the assistants went over and introduced a bunch of good toys and different uh, things that you could introduce to your puppy to play with together and also to play with when they're by themselves, different toys to develop certain things or, or help with certain behaviors and yeah, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that she said, and it makes sense, so I've got to do this when I get home, is as you can see from my videos, I have toys and stuff scattered everywhere. <laughs> and she had actually said that it's better to keep all the toys in a basket or someplace where it's all in one place. And then that makes playing with a toy with you all the more special because you're taking something that he knows is his or she knows is hers and then you're taking it out and you're playing with that toy together with your dog and it takes i guess it's supposed to be more fun or um it makes it more exciting for the dog to bond with you whereas if you have so many things laid around the toys that don't get touched or that aren't popular are never going to be popular she also said 
choose one toy that is kind of like your bonding toy and I actually bought one let me see if I can I'm gonna say this you know that you're older when you go to an outlet mall and a shopping center and you don't buy anything for yourself except food items and everything you buy is for your pet okay I mean I didn't even look at clothes I didn't look at shoes I didn't look at any of the things that I would normally look at when I'm at a shopping mall I only looked at things for Bandit, and for me, I just got food items. Picked up a really nice salad, and then my drink, which is almost gone, and I had Panda Express today for lunch, as you saw. Okay, so this is similar. The toy that she demonstrated with was a fish on a rope, but this is actually... Well, it's a fish, and it's a rope. I guess it's like a stingray. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's an imaginary fish. But she said, uh, usually, right, when you're playing, like, tug-of-war with your dog, and you're, like, doing that, it's really easy for the dog to accidentally bite you or, you know, try and grab a different part of the toy and your hand is there and I've been noticing that because as you saw like bandit loves my furry scrunchies and so he has a furry scrunchie and I take one end and he pulls the other and before he's just used to take it away but now he brings it to me and if I go like this then he puts the scrunchie in my fingers because he wants me to play tug of war with it I don't know if that's good or bad but yeah so I could go like this and just and he'll grab the scrunchie and he knows. But she said with this kind of toy where it's got the long rope, then you could move it around, you know, like that, right? And he could, you could do the tug. And if he tries to get another grip on it, won't bite your hand off. She also suggested that when you get a toy like this, it's kind of like a cat toy. And she said you can move it around and they can follow it around. But she also said don't do things like jump it up because they might jump and right fall and get injured or something. So she said it's just to play with on the floor. And so, yeah, so I saw this at a place called Pet Paradise. Pet Paradise. Pet, par oh, pet Paradise, and I thought I'd pick one up. Um, she also, you know, showed the classic Kong, and then different Kong toys, um, different types of hard bones that are safe and that are good for when the dogs are teething. And then Japan, for some reason, and I'm sure it's the same with the U.S., but I'm not sure. Um, but Japan is really into these interactive toys where you put in treats in certain places or you have the dog have to figure out how to get to those treats. So, so yeah, I broke down and I bought another interactive toy. You guys saw I have that mat and it has all those like sea things on it and that's an interactive toy. Okay, so I got that. <laughs> I got this um, minion one, and we'll, we'll film Bandit when he sees it. But, okay, so this is like, looks like popcorn, which you know I love. And the minions, the minions are here. Here's one with the bell. I wonder if they all have bell. Oh no, this, this one's just squishy. Uh, this one might have a squeaker. Yeah, this one has a squeaker. And you put it in here so you could put a treat or you could put something in there and hide the minion over it right they have like large ones where they have you know whack-a-mole so they have like whack-a-mole ones and a garden with carrots on it but they had so many I mean there was like I don't know 16 you know maybe 12 spaces and I don't want bandit to have like too many treats so I thought three was perfect and then what else oh well once I get home I'll I'll show you 
as Bandit gets introduced to it. But after the toy demonstration and explanation, the instructor broke us into groups and there were two assistants and the instructor and it was just to basically go over our survey and address the individual problems. And then after that, there was talk about the puppy class. Now, this was uh, my bad because I did, guess I didn't check or I didn't ask, but the puppy class that I really wanted to get into the junior class, which starts at the end of this month, was already filled up. And I should have made the reservation into the junior class, or yeah, into the junior class at the same time as I made the reservation for the consultation class. And now the junior class that I wanted to enter is all filled up. So the new dates for the puppy classes haven't been announced yet. They will start in uh, 2023 from January, and the dates will be announced later this month. So I don't have any idea yet when Bandit can enter the junior class, but because they know I want to be in the junior class, they are going to call me when the dates have been decided and they'll let me know. And the guy asked, did I prefer a Sunday class or the Wednesday class? And just because of my schedule, it's easier to commit to a Sunday. So I believe it's five classes five classes on every other Sunday and oh my goodness is it starting to rain it is okay so yeah so it's for five five lessons every other Sunday for a period of I guess three months also too uh, because I got that package deal when I got bandit he has all these coupons that are going to expire later this month so I made his appointment for a full shampoo course that was what the coupon is for um, the people there were so friendly so right so I made the appointment that'll be the end of October October 26th the, the day that the coupon runs out and he'll get the full shampoo course and because he was from there he's already had an experience shampooing or grooming there and yeah so that was that was what we discussed at the puppy class anyways it's starting to rain so i'm going to head back home and give bandit all his goodies and yeah so it was a very productive productive time today I Thank you.